Welcome to the Inferno Cast. Today's guest is a fourth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's a 10 time world champion, won the ADCC three times, and carries an 8 and 2 MMA record. Please welcome Padre Gracie. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Just lockdown is finishing and we open up the academy soon, so things are yeah, starting to happen. Sure a lot of people have been waiting to get back on the mats or some degree of normalcy, and I'm, I'm sure that you're the same way. I, I know that we spoke that you had kind of pivoted to some online classes and just trying to get creative. Um, you know, it's just difficult time. And I think that that's why things like this are important so that people can just kind of get to know different people in the industry and hear some fun stories. And that's where I wanted to start was kind of when you were a kid doing martial arts, um, I'm sure you were surrounded by martial artists and it was a very normal thing to do jujitsu or to train. Did it seem like that was just what all kids do or was there something that intrigued you or interest you that got you extra interested in martial arts? Uh, I mean, as a kid, it was, I think it's just something that you see yourself into it. You know, it's not, you never chose to be there. It's just, here I am, you know, suddenly I'm in the mat, I'm a kid, I'm seeing cousins and uncles training, inspiring, talking, arguing, shouting, you know, hugging. <laughs> You'll see all that daily, you know. So it's the kind of environment that you, you see yourself in. And, uh, you know, it's a bit, I have a, I'm from a big family, so I have a lot of cousins on my age. And one of the environments that we, you know, we actually get together, training, you know. Remember, my first uh, uh, memory that I have with Jiu Jitsu, apart from playing at home with my dad, is just going to my, my uncle Helion's academy, and suddenly my cousins are there. You know, Hollis, Igor, uh, Carlos, and you know a few others, and the Sunday is you know it's a it's a family get together. You know. <laughs> yeah. Was there a point in which you felt or that you realized this isn't what all families do? You know that like not everybody gets together and does jujitsu and beats each other up and drains. Yeah, you find that very very early. You know, as soon as you go to school and then <laughs> you, you know no one else is training. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you seem strange to everyone else. Um, when you were coming up, was there a transition in which doing martial arts because of just that's what the family did and becoming a martial artist was, um, you know, something that you were like, this is what I'm going to dedicate my life to, you know, or this defines who I am now. Was there a pivot point in which it affected you that way? Uh, there was, I think, you know, as a child, I used to, do you know jujitsu suddenly you know a lot of people in my family does but also just a sport you know you don't i think as a kid you don't have a conscience what the future is what an adulthood life is in in my my parents no one ever told me or, or pushed me that you know saying this is your path that's what you have to do you have to follow and it, even though that i was you know growing up as a gracie but there was never, I never felt pressure like I have to do, this is what the Gracie does. You know, it's, I just saw myself training and, you know, there was times that I didn't train much and times that I was training just judo because my mom and my father, you know, they, they, they separated, I was very young and they moved houses a few times. I lived with my mom for a while and then I went to live with my dad and not always, I lived very close to a Gracie gym. You know, there was one point I was living with my dad and, you know, there was not a Gracie gym nearby. So I was like training judo. It was a very good judo school. I did that for, you know, for a few years. And then I moved back to my mom. And, but there was a, when you say the pivot point, it was when I was 15, 14 years old, 14 to 15, I went to see my cousin Hidden. He, you know, I used to train with him as a kid. And then I spoke moved. to him yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> He's in Brazil, and she's been hiding there for, for the past four months. <laughs> yeah, he has a countryside right by my mom in uh, outside Rio. And uh, she, she told me he's been uh, hiding there for... <laughs> yeah, he's for staying months. under, yeah. Yeah, and then I went to, 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 you know, to spend my summer holidays with him, and Hollis, my cousin, uh, was living with him. And at that moment on, I spent there for a few weeks, and when I got back to, to, to Rio, I was like, man, this is what I want for me, you know? And that's, that was the, 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 the turning point of my life that I was like, okay. Yeah. This is what what do you think, what do you think made you really just understand that the martial arts path fit you? You know, was it the competition? Was it the challenge? 
you know, was it the family? This is, you know, who we are as a group and I want to, you know, raise up the family name. Like what really drove you in this new direction? I think first it was just the way of life because yeah, my father, he's one of those few black belts. You know, he was one of the best of his time, but he never owned a gym. And when Halls died, he kind of moved away from jiu-jitsu for many years. So there was a gap in my life that was like training on and off, but I didn't have, you know, my father never owned the gym in Rio, like taking me. So I've never really felt what it is to live, to have a jiu-jitsu lifestyle as a kid. You know, even though there was part of the Gracie family, but my mom doesn't have a, you know, she, she always worked with something else. And my father also, so I never really had any realization of what it is to own the gym, teach, train, eat well. I only had that when I went to, to, to see my uncle. And I stay at his house and Hollis were there. So he all, Hollis is a few years older than me. He was already a very tough purple belt. You know, was just a chubby 14 year old kid. You know, and not training much. Like my jiu-jitsu was like no big deal. No one never really paid attention to me. And suddenly, you know, we were training daily. We used to wake up in the morning, and then he was like, "Hoja, oh, you need to eat well. You know, or don't. You know, get get in a diet. You know, to be get get into shape. You no know, train. You know, be a champion." And then I started changing my life because I stopped eating well. I used to wake up, go for a run before breakfast come back, we used to go to a waterfall near his house, which was amazing. And we come back and then we drove to the academy. And there, it's such an amazing environment, you know, that you just, you train, you talk about, you laugh, such a friendly atmosphere. And then go back home and then same thing next day, same thing, same thing over and over again. I said, man, this is amazing. You yeah. know, and he was, you know, gotta train, go be a champion. I was like, man, I love this. And then like, I fell in love with the first time that actually had a very close contact what it means to have a jiu-jitsu lifestyle you know especially as a gracie and when i got back to rio i was like i don't want this i want that and then i was like now i'm gonna train every day you know like i'm a i'm a gracie i'm gonna and then i was like okay so now i'll be a champion and then the next step would be when i decided to you know to follow that path i was like man i'm gonna be the best in the world and then i was like okay this is what i really want and you know i dedicated my life to trying to to be yeah. yeah well when you look at it as being the competitor you know you talk about like i was dedicating myself to be the best in the world a lot of times when you start that journey you're like i'm going to be the best in the world or i dream of being the best in the world do you remember uh the transition when you were like chasing the dream to where you knew you were living the dream you're like no i have found the recipe for success like i understand how to perform consistently you know where it became instead of being the hopeful champion you became the confident champion is like i know i'm gonna win um was there a point in your life where it, it kind of transitioned uh no it's more it's more of the path you know because when i when i made that decision i was nobody i mean I, my jiu-jitsu was nothing you know it was I was like below average of people my age group, like, you know, like at that moment on, any time and I'll, 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 I'll sign in, I would lose. I wasn't that kind of kid, okay, I'm, I'm already good. So I'm just going to follow that path. And it is, it, you know, it's as I progress and I'll carry on being good. No, I was not, you know, I wasn't winning everything. You know, I was like in and out of tournaments, a little few, you know, for the past few years, but nothing big. You know, sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But you know, usually kids of my age that they already like training, they were like all better than me. You know, it took me a long time to actually be good, to, you know, to really be good, but I never gave up. You know, when I started, I would say when I got like 15, 16 years old, you know, I'm like, I mean, I'm going to be the best in the world, but I knew that's a long path. I'm like, I'm a 16 year old kid. Let's say the professional, when you actually go against the best in the world, that's when you're a black belt. Because before that, you're color belt, you know, you're like, you, you're amateur because you're not a black belt. You don't fight with the elite. So it's like, it's, I know I'm going to get there. So I'm, this is just my path. So it's not really, I never really thought, you know, I, I need to be better now. I need to win everything now. It's like, I never really care. 
about winning and losing. Of course, I hate losing more than I like winning, by the way. <laughs> like it's winning, of course, everyone likes winning. But my, my thing is like, I cannot lose. You know, losing for me is terrible. But yeah. I've, I've never, I just accepted what I was. You know, it was like, I need to train. And I was like coming back. I think it was the, it was the idea that I never left my mind. You know, it was like, I'll be the best in the world. But I never gave any time in it. It's, you know, that's a lifetime achievement. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, I remember being a blue belt, looking up, you know, black belts were champions, smashing me. I'm like, it's okay to lose. I mean, you know, it, it was like, it's normal. I don't, I never cared about losing. I never felt frustrated. I've never felt bad by losing to anyone. I was like, it's, 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 a, it's a learning process. You beat me today. I'm back tomorrow and we'll train again and we'll train again and we'll train again. And I never gave up and I've never felt frustra uh, frustrated with a loss. It's, I mean, it's even as a black belt, you know, like, okay, I lost, you know, it's like, damn, I gave my best, I lost. I'm still in my path. It's even like me, me trainees. I'm still in my path. It doesn't matter. It's, I just need to train more to be better. The one thing I always, knew for certain it's the only way to be good is training you want to be good you have to train and dedicate there's no secret you know people ask me you know it's funny they think there's like a secret training in the gracie family you know like we we hide things they just they discuss between us and like no one gets in the room just us that, that, yeah. that, that doesn't exist it's a myth <laughs> yeah so, you know it's it's the only way to be good at it is train you know, you, you, need, you, need, you need to train. So I never gave up. I would say I felt that I had I was not a natural talent, but I knew I had something because, you know, like at that time when I was training, you know, Gracie Baja back then, it was a very one of probably the strongest academy at the time. If not, it's one of the strongest for sure. You know, some people, they might argue otherwise, but, you know, it's, it's, it was one of the very top, you know. You walk around the mat, there's... 30 black belts, 15 of them are world champions. There's 50 brown belts. You know, there's like so many tough people to train. And, you know, you win, you lose, it doesn't matter. But they're like, everybody was training daily. Everyone trying to be the champion. Everyone, you know, trying to improve and to win the next tournament. And I'm, I'm one of them. And I, it's, it's, and I felt my progress. I was catching up with everyone ahead of me and everyone there was my level, suddenly they can catch me. And I'm, so I, that I felt, there's like my progress, it was slowly I was catching everyone. That I always felt and I'm like, then I felt this is my path. You know, even that there is a faraway dream, but I always felt I'm progressing, I'm going somewhere. I never felt that I hit it a wall, you know, because some people, they have a bad day and they're like, oh my God, I had a bad day. This is a nightmare. I'm going to stop training. I mean, I had many bad days, but it's, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I train tired. You know, you, you go for a conditioning session and then you're going to train with someone. Of course, I'm not going to perform. You, you cannot expect to perform well every day. And I never expected. So I never, I never felt bad when I lost, when I tapped somebody at the gym. I tapped many times. I mean, until I became good, you know, like people look at me and say, this kid is good. So I, 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 start, I start getting in the level of the, the league, you know. It took yeah. me years, years, like years of getting smashed, getting beat up, getting tapped every single session many times. I never cared. I mean, I'm learning. I'm, the, the one thing for me, I always enjoy training. You know, it's when you're losing, I always liked it. Because it's, you know, losing is part of it. It's part of the game. You could, I never, I never care about losing. I was like, I made a mistake. Let's go again. He catch me. Do you remember? Let's go do again. you remember when you kind of made that uh, that jump of like trying to be one of the top guys, and then one day you were like, you know what? Maybe I am one of the top guys. I mean, like, was there? Uh, a tournament or a competition or even just a training day or was there a time in which you kind of were like you know what I, I'm starting to achieve my goal and like I'm starting to be the elite level performer was there any realization that ever happened of man you know I'm one of the top guys in the world now it wasn't one moment because 
that is a process that happened slowly, you know, by it, it, everything happens in baby steps, you know, it takes, it's, it's, it's like I say, it's years for you to be good, you know, and, and you, you, you slowly, you're getting better. So the, what you're saying, I felt, because I remember, you know, being a blue belt, the black belt kills you and they already there. So your progress as a blue belt to black is a huge gap. But those that they are already on the top on the black belt, it's a very slow process. You know, they, they, their process is, is very slow. But as a blue belt, as a beginner, you have a long way to catch up. And the time, you know, it's, and I felt getting closer and closer to them. So it wasn't one moment that, was, you know, suddenly I trained with someone and say, oh, I got this guy. Because that, that doesn't happen in, you know, it's not in a week, you know. It's, Suddenly, people that they'll tap in me a few times a session, you know, a few times a, a training. And then they tap me a few less, and a few less, and a few less. And suddenly, I'm, I, I get it one time. I'm like, oh, yes. But, you know, and then he carry on catching. You know, it's something that is, it doesn't happen in one go. It's a, it's, so I felt getting closer and closer. And the thing that, that I, I never felt suddenly I stopped progressing. So for me, I always, always, over the, even as a black belt, you know, if you looked at my, my, you know, the two last times I competed at the world, you know, 2009 and 2010, my performance was much better than the first twice that I competed at the world. You know, like my fights were very hard, like I barely tapped anyone. And then the last time, so every, every, every since like a 16 year old, you know, 15 year old, it's, it's always, I always felt getting better, always. And I always wanted to get better. And, and even at the highest level, I was a still, I'm like, I just need to get a bit better. You know, I need to get a bit better. That's why I never stopped. You know, that's why I think I achieved the level I, I am today because I always try to improve, you know, ever, always, always improving small things, small things like, you know, mount, scape, side control, people, things that people neglect, you know, they focus too much in competition mode, points, sweeps, you know, they need to develop that best sweep to win a tournament. And sweep, sweep is a small part of the game, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more important that I know how to submit you when I get to that position than, you know, focusing you know, just one sweep. Sweep, I get swept almost every fight. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you get ticked down. It's, that cannot be your focus, you know, focus the finish. How do I finish the fight? That was my yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you've definitely proven that. I mean, because over the years, everybody's like, when you hit full mount, everybody knows what's coming, you know? And the true mastery of technique, when you look at guys that play and do jujitsu is whenever, it's not when you get caught with something you didn't see. Like that's always appreciated and that's cool. But it's when you get caught with something you see coming, but you can't stop it, you know? And that goes back to mastery of the technique of just you control all the details, the position. And when you were competing, was there like a certain plan or structure that you were looking for as far as like, here's the key points for me to make happen what I need to happen? You know, was there like a few anchor points you would look for or was it always reactive of like whatever you feed me I just find a way around I was reactive to be honest I, like I I never ever set a strategy never you know it's like I need to fight this way I've never changed the way I fight to anyone regardless of you know the only thing that the only thing that was like okay I need to think of something is you know I'm gonna you're gonna fight the guy who has a great judo great takedowns and I'm crap. Of course I gotta pull guard. You know, it's that was the only thing. I never really care if the guy has a great guard and I have to pull before him. I I need to pass. You know, we fight. I need to win. You know, so the the the, the idea of fighting, you know, how I saw fighting jujitsu, it's I need to for, for me to be the best, I need to win. It's it's a simple fact. There's no other way to prove you're the best, if you lose, you need to win. And the only way that you can make a statement is like, I'm the best, there's no doubt about it, is through submission. Because I remember in the early, you know, in, the, in my early belts, there was, I mean, I was not that good yet. So I, was, I wasn't submitting everyone. So every fight is a, is a you know, it's a fight. It's there and back, there and back. 
And when I started getting good, you know, I started winning a lot more, but it's still, it was still hard fights. Every belt, blue belt, you know, a lot of the fights, even the times I go with the I won world champion, I won the world championship. I had crazy hard fights. It was never easy. Purple belt, crazy hard fights. So I just was not good enough to submit them. It was just the way it was, but I was still trying. But it's, you know, it's fighting for me. It's like I need to, to, to win. Ah, and the, the referees, they was always against me, by the way. And I think that's one of the things that was like, I need to submit my fights. Because if there's a, if there's a, a question, is against me, always. Yeah. Always. If there's, if there's always a doubt about it, I knew it's against me. It's like yeah. I go do so many times, the referee, anything that they favor me, or even, even that the, I suppose, you know, there was like the, my points. But there was a question about it, man, the whole state was like, ooh. Yeah. So it was like, okay, I need to, I need to submit. I need to. So every time I fight someone, it doesn't matter if you're going to pull guard or, or if I pull guard. Because if I pull guard, if I sweep, what happens? I'm in your guard. I still need to pass. So it makes no difference. For me, never made yeah. any difference with what I am in the fight, you know? It's like, yeah. and for me to submit someone, and, you know, if you want to full, have full control of the other person, you have to get, get away with the guard, side control, improve, mount, back, that's it. That, the fight has to finish there. So that was always my goal, you know, it's trying to, to get as far as I can, mount or back, and then submit. Yeah, when you sometimes whenever like I talk to people that are trying to be finishers in jujitsu, they almost are kind of like sharpshooters. Like you know, if I can catch the arm in this position, get the lock. But you know, when you look at the high levels like yourself, like it's very positionally oriented. It's like no, I'm going to dominate the position to such a degree that you have no choice except to give me the submission. You know, so when you're controlling people and you make your transition, um, you know, how focused are you on causing them to make mistakes versus, versus just waiting for them to make a mistake? No, I never really, you know, my style is not counterfeiting, so I never really waited for a, you might put a mistake. Um, and I never, you know, if you look past my fires, I'm, I'm not, my speed are not crazy fast and I'm never stable. I'm never holding any position. So I'm, I'm, it's a constantly progression. You know, it's the way Jiu-Jitsu is to progress to, dominant, to, to, to domination and then comes the submission. So it's, for me, it's very important for you to try to keep as much control as you can and then go for the submission. So if you try like a sloppy a submission, you, will, you might sacrifice your whole control of it and then you go back to standing. We just start again. I mean, that's that. That for me is like you. You know, it's such a you know fighting is such a hard the, you know control for you to get to a dominant position. I guess a good guy, you know, for you until you make that dominant position is is a is a battle. They will resist as much as they can. So I I never sacrifice a sloppy attack because imagine it goes back. I I you know then I wouldn't have more time to get there again and then the fight will be over and then suddenly he's in my back and I'm like I lost so you lost just because you tried that floppy submission you know so it's like for me it's a very important control when I have absolutely control of the position I will never risk a crazy attack unless it's like 10 seconds then it's like okay you don't right, yeah. finish but you know it's it's because it, if, if you sacrifice your control for submission then you that's when you end up losing your position you know but so we, it's a constantly tightening things up, tightening, getting back, getting there until the end is the submission, you know. So when you look at competition this way, tighten, tighten, take advantage, how has that bled over into your life outside of martial arts or off the mats? Like, are, do you approach life the same way or business or success or your family? Like, what lessons from being a martial artist and a competitor do you feel are influencing you outside of the gym i think everything it's because the you, the way you fight is your personality is your personality it's it, you cannot disconnect it's you know you, your personality you will clearly show when you fight if you're a nice person you show if you're not you will show if you're impatient you will show if 
if you're in a bad mood, if you will, everything that is happening that you know that is about you, you will reflect when you're fighting. It's impossible. So, you know, when you're not fighting, the similarity is still there because it's you. It's you know, you can see, you know, many of my fights. I was always calm. I was never explosive person. You know, I never lost control. You know, it's, it, that reflects in everything in business. You know, I don't lose control, and you know, it's I try to not to. <laughs> but you know, I, you know, may not. I'm always calm. You know, it's regardless of the situation. I try to keep a clear mind, take like, uh, uh, you know, like good decisions based on uh, logic, not in you know. Let me try this. You know, no, there's no trying this. You know, let me make sure this will work before. I try, you know, so let, you know, try to see every angle, analyze it, regardless of how much pressure you are, you know, you try to keep a calm mind and not take uh, crazy decisions. You know, if you, if you anger, you know, if you, if you stress, there's no decision to be made. Let's calm down, let's focus and okay, let's analyze. And, you know. Was there a time in your life where that skill set wasn't as strong? where you know you were making more decisions out of emotion. I mean, because we all do it when we're younger, but like, do you remember whenever you kind of transitioned into that calmer, calculated decision maker before it, you know, and then before it was like, oh, you know, I'd get frustrated, I'd get angry and, you know, like, and just making decisions in life from kind of like the wrong perspective. Did you ever have to battle that? Uh Nothing that will, you know, fixate my mind. Nothing that's significant. No. Yeah. Not really. no, do, you, I don't. do you think it's being, do you feel like it's being immersed in this martial arts culture that has helped you avoid that most of your life? Uh, I think so. But I, th I mean, it's like mistakes. It's, it's, it's not that I made bad decisions. I mean, I made many, you know, in life. You know, sometimes in fight to make a bad decision in a bad situation. And then, okay, I made a bad choice. Let me focus, you know, work my way out of here without panicking. I think that it, I always use in my life. It's, of course, I made bad decisions. You know, you, know, you cannot hope to always be right and, you know, take, take the right decisions. I made many bad decisions, but it's like, okay, I made a bad decision. There's no panicking. Now let me work my way to fix this in a clear, conscious way, you know. Isn't that? So I never panic after a bad decision. I think that it, that it happened many times, which is a clearly reflection of the way I fight and that I use in my life in general, in business, in, in my personal life, in anything. Like, yeah. okay, a decision is made, it made a mess, but the fight is not over. Let me yeah. fix this and, you know, and that many times. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I love that perspective because it makes me think about uh, one time somebody told me, he said, there's no bad positions in jiu-jitsu. There's only the next position in jiu-jitsu. And, and just to hear you talk about thinking through strategy and struggles, it kind of reminds me of that little comment I heard years ago because it's like, like you said, you make a bad decision or something goes sideways, panic and stress, that's not going to help solve the problem. You know, you have to approach it calmly and just figure out what's the next position I need to get to. And I really feel like that you're kind of resonating that a little bit. Yeah, but let me be very clear. There is many bad positions. <laughs> there is many, but it's not over. There's always a way out, regardless of what bad positions you are. You can, there's like some position that you terrible. You know, your arm is here, your back is being curved, your neck is being twisted, but the fight is still on. That's the most important thing is it doesn't matter how crazy bad position you find yourself in it's not over i think that lesson for me it, it you know it it, 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 it kind of it helped me so many ways in my life you know it, it doesn't matter how you find yourself in and that's like it's very important it it, it helps you you know thousands millions of people you know when they realize that it doesn't matter how bad you you see yourself in any aspect in an argument in business, in a personal life, anything is not over. You can still work your way out. Just don't panic. You know, people when they panic in that bad position, they 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 take they made a bad choice. They'll take a bad choice out of that, and they'll make it worse. That's the thing. 
if you're in a bad position and you make, you, you make a bad choice, you make that position worse. So it's relax, stay as calm as you can, because once you're calm, your mind, you can think better. You know, you have a clear mind. That's, it, that's for me, it's, it helped me so many ways. Because that's why my defense is so good, because I don't panic. I can be getting be choked out, you know, when you, you can barely breathe, you, you, you start tunneling your vision, it's not over. Let me try to push here, let me go there. Oh man, I'm out. I mean, and then you're out because I kept myself cool. I did not panic. I didn't went berserk. That helped me hundreds of times in Jiu Jitsu and in my life. You know, so sometimes people depend on like an outside person to tell them that things are okay. You know, they become very dependent on somebody just tell me things are okay. Do you think that training in martial arts and specifically doing jujitsu helps people not be as dependent on that? Because they're the one in the fight. They're the one getting choked. Like they have to become calm. They have to make the decision. Do you think that helps people depend on others less to, to feel better about things, you know, like where they don't require other people to tell them it's going to be okay to where they're able to kind of find their own center. Absolutely. Because doesn't matter what your coach shouts at you, it's you who getting choked out. He's not going to, if you don't move, he shouts, he's not going to help. They won't help you shouting, screaming. They can be detailing, telling what to do. If you do not move and you think you try your way out, you're going to still be there. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's all about you. You made a mistake. You put yourself in that situation. Now keep, you know, now work your way out. For sure, for sure. And because it's not just one. It's very hard to happen if that happens with you once and then it's like, oh, that's a life lesson. No, it needs to happen hundreds of times for you to finally get into your conscious mind. Okay. Now I can make that connection, you know, it's because you, you know, you can say I've been training a year. Oh, my life changed. I, I've learned so many things. No, you learn nothing. You're still a white belt. You know, yeah. you, know you know nothing about you did so that year. You still, yeah. You're not even, a, you know, you're three strike white belt. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you need like years and years for you to realize, you know, like a lot of things I've, I've just really realized after I got my black belt and then I've been training my whole life. Have you applied your work ethic of being an athlete and a fighter to other things in your life that you know has made the difference? It's like, you know, because I'm an athlete, because I work this hard, that's why I'm successful in these other things outside of the gym? I think it does in a way that I know how hard it was for me to achieve anything in fighting. You know, I don't know how hard it was for me to be physically prepared for that specifically tournament. And just, I just did well because I've trained that hard. It's, there's no easy way. Every time I did not train enough, I paid that what I was fighting. Every time I felt it's, there is no easy way out. There is no easy way out. It's in life is the same thing. You can try, you know, you can try to do a quick thing and let me see if I can get there, but no. You know, quickly you realize there's no easy way out. If I want to achieve, if I want that goal, if I want this is what I want, this is hard. And it can be really hard. And, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. You just have to do what's necessary. It's, you just need to do everything that you have to. Otherwise, you don't get there. I, I really like that sentiment of you have to do whatever is necessary regardless. And I think it's that just committed mindset that seems to lead people to a different level of success in life, you know, not only just as athletes, but as individuals and people. Um, so when you were being a competitor and you considered going to MMA, what was the interest, you know, what was the plan? Was it just curiosity? Was it like, Hey, it's something different, you know, better payday. Maybe where did the transition to MMA to go try that come from? So that was never a, a decision for me, the same way that when I decided, you know, when I visit my cousin, my uncle Helian, it's like, oh, this is the Gracie way, you know, the Jiu-Jitsu way, this is what I want to do. 
and then you suddenly look everyone else in your family who followed the same path you know when i look back every single one of them they 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 fought mma at some point all of them so for me you know i was like 16 years old and i knew there's not a choice for me like it's i will train when i'm get my black belt when i'm technically physically prepared i will have to fight mma like i will have to it's not something that i never thought okay let me decide it when i get there no it's i will have to so i knew yeah. i always knew that at some point i'll be fighting mma i always knew did you well, love mma well, yes. uh, did you uh did you enjoy it and love it and embrace it all you know and be like oh man this is a lot of fun or was it one of those i'm going to do this as a competitor because i need to test myself and then once i do this i'll go back to jiu-jitsu not really it's like i never loved it but you know i think that's one of the reasons that i never really committed 100 yeah. percent. but it was i knew i had to and you know, after I won the, you know, the DCC in 2005, and then, I, you know, then you start hearing from your cousins, from your uncles, like, it's okay. They start talking, oh, you know, now is your time. Now you start. So I knew, I said, okay, now is, is approaching my time, you know. It's, and I tried to do both, but it's very hard. And then it got to the point that, you know, for a few years, uh, I, you know, I fought like, you know, fighting jiu-jitsu and fighting MMA. And then I, I start fighting less and less jiu-jitsu because it's so, so hard to prepare for both. Very hard. You know, you don't see anyone doing that. You know, I, I was actually the only one who did it that for years. The only one, no, no one else, you know, I was, I was fighting in MMA because I was committed to just for the World Championship in jiu-jitsu because that for me was like, you know, that's the, the most important yeah. tournament to go. Like if I want to compete, one, that is the one, like he's the one, the best of the best are there. So I was like, okay, I will fight MMA, you know, concentrating fighting, I'll carry on fighting with, training with the Gi. But I knew end of May, early June, I need to be there. And then suddenly I have an MMA three weeks before and I'm like, wow. <laughs> and, and, and I've been waiting for the fight for like six months. So if yeah. I say no to this, like, okay, another six months, okay, okay, then my MMA career is over because I can't fight every 18 months, you know? So I was like, I have to say yes for that. But I was like, okay, so three weeks after that, I have to fight the world. So yeah. I did that like two or three times, but, but I fell on my performance because physically all the training you know, with the gi is all about grips, you know, power on the grips and, you know, different muscles that you work in MMA. So, you know, fighting the world, you know, like two or three weeks after an MMA fight, I physically, I felt big difference. Yeah. And, and then I was like, man, either, either one or the other, because, I, you know, I'm risking losing jujitsu just because I'm not well prepared enough because I've been training for MMA, you know. And I was like, I'm doing well. I was like, you know, building up my, 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 my career in MMA. So, I, you know, and by then I was like, man, I already fought everything and everyone in jujitsu. So I made it okay. So now I'm like, let me focus in MMA, you know. But... I, the thing I've never loved it, you know, that, that was the thing I never really, it wasn't my passion. So I never gave my heart to it. So it's, you know, because of that, you know, I never really fought that man much. Yeah. Well, I mean, cause you know, I always look at it is it, it's like when you look at kids, sometimes, you know, a lot of times they're good at reading or they're good at math, you know, like they have a love for one or the other, sometimes both. But and I look at the same thing with athletes in combat sports where you have people that, you know, they, they favor striking or they favor grappling and kind of like the, the MMA competition or they favor the jujitsu competition. And, you know, a lot of times I feel like people feel like it's strange to say that it's okay to have preference. They're like, oh, how can you have preference? You know, you got to be a fighter. And it's like, because I'm a human being and I can like and choose what I, I love. And sometimes, you know, not everything can be your passion. Um, the, and, you know, the people they like gi, they don't like no gi, and the other way around. I mean, of course, yeah. It's not because you like jujitsu, grappling. You have to love everything in that, you know, every every aspect. No, I mean, I yeah. never loved MMA. I thought because I, you yeah. know, that I had to do. I felt I had to. You know, no, I, I never hated, it, but I never loved it. You know, it's not. My yeah, thing. it just wasn't that internal fiery fuel for you that was just yeah. like, you know, that's not what you woke up for every day. Um, like I, you know, getting ready for like a world championship, I used to, you know, I do whatever, you know. I was like, okay, let me. I'll give my max, my heart and soul, 
to get ready for that tournament because I, I'm not going to lose. You know, it's like, yeah. I had like fire inside and I, MMA, I've never had any fire. No. Was it, was it unique getting all that prep work and everything done for one match? You know, was that, did that ever feel weird or strange? Like all this work for one match with yeah. one guy. Yeah. It's different, but it's much, it's physically much harder that one fight. MMA is physically is much harder than Jiu Jitsu or no Gi or any grappling fight, much harder because it's, it, there's no rest, you know, the intensity is much harder. And yeah. my, my strength is taking people down. And that is the most tiring part of fighting MMA is when you try to take your opponent down. You can stand up, you can get punched in the face, you know, that, that's fine. I mean, you'll you get damage, but it's not tiring. You know, you can keep your hands up swinging, stepping back. Imagine the moment that you grab their legs and try to take them down, they, they do not fall. You know, your arm goes here. And the second time they come here, by the time, you know, like, oh yeah. my God. You're just like, will you please go down? Like, please get on the mat so I can choke you or punch you. Yeah. Yeah. The takedown game. I mean, that's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, and especially, you know, in the MMA arena, just, have the, the strike to the shots and things are slippery and fast paced and, and just the talent level, just the talent level of grapplers and fighters and MMA athletes just over the last 20, 30 years has just escalated so much. It's just a different world out there as far as people that are athletic. I mean, you got blue belts now that are basically professional athletes that do nothing but jujitsu all day, you know, and just phenomenal, you know, technical talent. And it just, you, you look at our industry as it keeps growing like you can just only imagine what's going to happen in the next 20 years when you have kids that have just been doing nothing but this for their entire life. And with the evolution of, you know, just the sport and how many more people train. And, and like you were saying, having all those people in a gym to train with to make you better, you know, just it's amazing to see what's going to be happening, you know, within our lifetime and, and beyond that, because it's crazy. So um, when you go back, as a competitor, was there a match that you just really loved or that really defined you, you know, win or lose? Just, you know, was there anything you look back on that was like, man, I remember whenever I had this match and that was just a defining moment for me, whether it be, you know, you knew you learned something about yourself or you just, you achieved something that you'd always dreamed of. Uh, I think there was one turning point in my career that was ADCC 2005. I think from all, all the tournaments I, I fought and I competed, that was the, the, the most significant uh, in, in uh, many aspects. It was a new black belt and I was I, like two years out of black belt. And you know, if you look at all, all the black belts, you know, it's like in the first in two years, they are not on the peak, you know, they're like, they're still losing for people that have been fighting for, you know, five, six, seven years. And, you know, at the moment that I got my black belt, I was already like, I made to the final of the absolute. And then 2004, you know, like I won my weight and I, there was that arm lock on Jacare's fight on the open, that mess. So when I went to fight the, the, the ADCC, that, that tournament itself was very prestige because it was the only Nogi tournament with, you know, on the highest level. For years and years was in Abu Dhabi. All the best grapplers in the world were fighting there. So it was very known to be like super tough. The best of the best are there, not just Jiu-Jitsu fighters. You have Marquette and other guys. So the, so the whole world, not just the Jiu-Jitsu world, were looking for that tournament. It was the first time they came out of the, the, the Abu Dhabi. It was, you know, we came straight to America, LA. And I'm like, okay, I got, and then I'm, 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 I'm in, you know. I'm actually, I had to fight the, the qualifiers because I lost third, on, I got third on the, on the year before and I fought my, my cousin, uh, uh, Higan. And I, you know, they didn't like that match much. And it was like, no, you need to, to, to do, go to do the qualifiers. And I was like, I, I, I actually, I wasn't going to go, to be honest. When they told me I had to, to qualify, I was like, man, if I'm not invited, you know, I'm like, I'm not going, you know, it's, I can't, I see, I'm like, I can't go to the qualifiers. I was like, no, it's, I, I'm better than that, you know. But then 
uh, you know, actually my mom actually was like, no, you should go. And I spoke to my, my, my cousin Hans and they were like, you know what, just go. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Then I go, I was like, hang. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go. And then I went to qualify, I top everyone. That was in December and then next year. And then I was like, that was the tournament. Twice I got, I prepared, like I think I did maximum. I couldn't do more. That was probably, if I did like a hundred percent, you know, that was the tournament that I did every maximum I could. I trained, no one trained harder than me. Like, you know, I was like a maniac training every day. I was in New York with my cousin Hansel. If I have to drive, I was like driving three to four hours a day just to, work, to, to go train because Hansel is in New Jersey. You know, it was like 15 minutes an hour to his academy. And then I was training with Martin Rooney. Same thing as an hour away, an hour there, an hour back. And then I rest and then an hour to the city, an hour back. Sometimes I go to Ricardo and then an hour there and back. So like, man, every day, four hours a day. I did that for over two months. And every training session, I'm, I'm leaving exhausted. You know, I'm doing everything I could, maximum. And I'm like, I'm going to win. I'm going to top everyone. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm going to top everyone. And when I got to the day, like I had crazy hard fights. You know, I, I, submit, I was able to submit everyone, but, you know, all, like, okay, some of the, the guys, like two or three guys, it wasn't like amazing. I dominated them and I submitted, but everyone else, I had crazy fights, you know, over time, over, over time. And then I got the back and choke. But before that, it was like crazy fights. But I'm getting tired of his no is very tiring. And you know, and I fought the weight and the absolute. My last fight of my weight division, I fought Kakareko. And it was on, on Sunday, even before the, the absolute, the open class. I fought for 30 minutes. First fight of the day, I had a bat of 30 minutes just, just to warm up the day. And then Kakareko gave up. I'm like, okay, now we start the open. So I'm you know, physically starting. I was I was tired. But I never gave up. I remember semi-final of the Open. I fought, I think, Sean Dior over Doom. And it was a fight. It was a very hard fight. I submitted. And then I remember, like, before the final, and I'm tired, physically exhausted. But in my mind, I never gave up, ever. I'm like, I, I knew I was tired. But I'm like, I just need to rest because the final's coming. You know, it's not like, oh, man, shit. I'm too tired, shit, I should have been fresh. Oh, this is gonna be a hard fight. No, man, every fight's a hard fight. I was exhausted. My, you know, my, I remember half, you know, massaging my arm and I'm, and I'm rest. I'm like, man, I need to rest. I just need to rest because the final's coming. And then when the final came, you know, like again, I, was, I knew I was tired. I knew I was not fresh. And I'm like, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna, I'm good. this is a fight, you know, Jack Harris. Like I knew it was gonna be a hard fight. You know, he's a super tough opponent. We have we fought like I don't know how many times. And I'm like, and I start I, I was losing by one point, you know, 20 minutes fight, 18 minutes I'm losing. By one point, I'm like, I'm gonna lose this fight. I can't believe it because I went for a guillotine. Not because yeah. he scored. Like I went for a guillotine. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose. But he's not gonna win. I'm gonna lose. I made a mistake. I'm like, I'm pissed off. Yeah. And then I joked him. I was like, oh man, that was like you know, that was, that was an amazing moment because it was such a, so hard, the whole training, the whole preparation, the whole tournament. And then like, you know, when I submitted everyone and I think the whole world of fighting in jiu-jitsu and then they, paid, they really paid attention to me, you know, because of the importance of the, 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 the tournament, everyone was there, it was, you know, and I think that moment I fell, I'm like, now everyone is, is watching me. What do you think that experience taught you about yourself? It's, I mean, that I never gave up. You know, I'm like, I'm a dedicated person that I really believe in, you know, when I, all my goals that, you know, I, when I had a mission that is some, I can be lazy, but I can be the most dedicated person in the room. And like, I'm very stubborn. Then, I mean, when I'm committed, I'm, 100% committed, like 100%. If I, once I make a decision, this is what I'm going to do, that's not holding me back, you know. Yeah. When you, last couple questions. Um, the first one is, who has been probably the most major influences in your life and, and what did you learn from them? 
uh, I think I think probably the the people that participate on my training on my career my, like my professors it's you know Helion was my first one and then you know he carry on uh, for you know for 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 my, the whole of my uh, career in and out you know we live in different cities but you know he always helped me out i always went to get, you know looking for him to to learn new things my uncle carlos carlinhos he was my main teacher he graded me on my bells you know i trained at his academy and my father of course my cousin Hanzo, you know he had a huge influence on my career but later i think when i got to 20 21 that i start going to new york that's when he started influencing my career and my you know my training then i'm you know when i moved to england i was like going to train with him in all the nogis and mmas and then i we got very uh, much closer you know we were very close but you know then he was uh he had a direct impact on my training my career you know he was always in my corners and you know i always try to to get influence for people who achieve greatness you know and you know, you know always looking back in my family you know, it's like my, you know, all, all, all the, 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 you know, the champions in my family, like, you know, what was the path, what they did, you know, why did they uh, win, you know, what made them win? And, you know, I look outside too, it's like, you know, what made uh, someone else great? And, you know, I, I was able to train with like great people throughout my, my life. And I always try to, you know, to look at people who achieve things and like, why, you know, what made them and not the others? And I think that was a the important lesson that I tried to, you know, different people. If you were going to give somebody advice on how to find fulfillment, what would that advice be? Uh, how to find fulfillment, it's inside of you. You know, it's, it's not something that you can, nothing will fulfill you if you don't have that inside. Because there is no gold medal who will fulfill your your, your desire to be champion, you know, that does not come just with a medal. It's, you know, something that you have to have inside. It's, you know, like I've never cared by winning or losing any tournament, you know, like it's, I'm proud that what I did, you know, don't take me wrong, but it's not the, that medal itself that, you know, gives me pleasure. Medal for me is just a piece of medal. It, regardless of what metal, metal is, you know, gold, bronze, or, or silver, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the journey is what you made to, you know, in your career. So winning any world championship, I mean, it's great to win, but it was just showing me that like I'm in the right path. You know, it's like I'm I'm being fast. So th that was that was what mattered for mattered me the most. It's I need to be the best, and the, that does not come in one fight. Fighting someone once does not prove you the best. It's, it's, it's a journey, you know. Yeah, I like that. If you had to, if you could only leave your children with three pieces of advice to be successful and happy in life, and this is all you could give them was a few pieces of advice, what would those be? Choose something that makes you happy. You know, don't try to, like I tell my son, you know, it's don't try to be a fighter for me and you know do whatever makes you happy you know it's important that you decide what you want to do in life that's you your decision not mine not your mom not anyone else it's you and whatever you do you know choose something that makes you happy and do it with your heart you know? That's amazing. Man, that is great insight. A lot of wonderful stories. You're a wonderful athlete. You've set a great example for what people can achieve. And you've been a major influence on the industry. And, and definitely, I think that you have changed the face of jiu-jitsu with your performances over the years, as many people you know have done in the past, and they will continue to do. But um, you have a really humble attitude and just I've really enjoyed you making time and you know I'm always thankful to Nick for for connecting us and and we'll definitely be in touch soon But I just wanted to ask if there was anything you'd like to finish with No, just big hug to everyone. You know, we live in some tough times, you know, crazy times all over the world I think just keeps your head up and you know, like I said before regardless of how bad you see yourself You know, there is a way out. Don't worry. Don't panic Stay calm, enjoy life, be happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I really like that.
Well, man, I appreciate the time. I hope you have a great day and we'll be in touch soon. Thanks, bro. Pleasure.